If you have a strong workforce case, labor case, when you are on a site visit, it is always a good practice to make sure, if possible, to have a local HR person to meet with the, uh, the client that's coming in and talk to them about what they experience from that standpoint. As always, we'll cover a couple of positions available on our end, and then we'll cover a few more available across the U.S. Precision Machining Service Provider Bullen Ultrasonics plans to expand its Technology Development Center in Eaton, Ohio, with a $14 million project that is expected to create 55 jobs. Next Move Group, the voice of economic development. Hello and welcome to this edition of the Economic Development Newscast. I'm your host, CEO Chuck Sexton of Next Move Group. I hope that you had a great holiday season with your family and your friends. We're kicking off 2023 really strong uh, as a firm. Uh, we're extremely busy. I'm in Texas right now uh, on site visits with one of our site selection clients. I'll be in five states next week uh, and probably an additional two or three before our next newscast. One thing you're going to notice this year is our content is going to slow down just a hair and it's, it has to do with how busy we are. We're going to go down to uh, one newscast per month. We're going to try to fill that with more robust information to give you uh, the tools that you need uh, as you're working out there in the field. Uh, we're also on our podcast, we're going to sh shift those down to two to three per month rather than four to five per month. Again, that all really just comes down to timing. And um, I want to make sure that you all understand that we're going to be out there uh, visiting with you more often in person now that, uh, you know, we're, we're way past COVID issues and, and travel restrictions and everything. You know, one of the things we want to do is be in person more often with you, the economic development professionals out there. And so I want to give you a heads up on where we're going to be coming up. We've already booked quite a few speaking events uh, at conferences. Um, right now, there's, I think there's five or six, but I'm going to tell you about the ones that are closest uh, right now. <clears throat> uh, we're going to be at North Carolina's Economic Development Conference uh, in the spring, in March. Uh, that one's one, uh, I think Chad is going to be at that one. Uh, in May, we're going to be in three different places. So the Tennessee Economic Development Spring Conference, we're going to be at Mid-America Economic Development Conference uh, in Kansas City. And then I'm going to be at Meet the Consultants in Atlanta with SEDC May 8th and 9th. Any of those uh, that you haven't gotten signed up for, uh, especially if you're part of the Mid-America Group, if you're part of the Southern Economic Development Conference, make sure uh, to go and take a look at those conferences. Get signed up. Come and see us there. Let's talk about what your goals and plans are for 2023. If you don't want to wait till then to talk about goals and plans for 2023, Chad and I uh, have decided we want to try to spend more time with economic developers one-on-one -on -one this year. That's another goal of ours for 2023. Chad is meeting with them every Wednesday. So, uh, and every Wednesday has been packed with folks for at least 30 minutes. Mine's a little more flexible because, again, I'm on the road quite a bit, uh, but I'm also doing that with economic developers. And look, you know, what we want to do is hear what you're trying to achieve this year. If there's a possibility that we can assist you with that, great. If not, maybe there's some advice that we can give you as you go forward. One of the things that I've been meeting with folks about right now are recently uh, folks are showing me what they have to offer from a site selection standpoint. And that's really helpful for me. Uh, it's given me great insights into some even some states that, you know, we haven't done some site selection in yet, but are opening up to us because a lot of our clients are looking out farther west. <clears throat> you know, the southeast continues to fill up with projects, especially on the EV uh, side, uh, automotive side, uh, obviously, and some of the other uh, manufacturing industries. But I'm in Texas right now. You know, I'm talking to folks in Utah and Arizona. So we're we're leaking farther west uh, with some of our site selection projects. And I think that's going to continue uh, again. And that all has to do primarily with the easing supply chains and, and making sure that, uh, you know, our clients are as close as possible to client base and raw materials. You know, that those are big decision makers, obviously, from a geographical standpoint. So uh, if you have something you'd like to discuss with us, reach out to me, chuck at nextmovegroup.com. If you'd like to meet with Chad, uh, hit me up anyway. I'll make sure that you get on the schedule with Chad uh, on one of the Wednesdays coming up. Um, a few other things that we have going on this year <clears throat> are actually going on right now, uh, strategic planning. We're doing a lot of strategic planning for, for clients all over the place uh, in West Virginia, Illinois, Alabama, Texas. Uh, we, uh, we have quite a few that are coming up. Those are ones we're finishing up. And we're kicking off uh, two more before the end of January. So uh, a lot of that going on. We have folks that are doing site feasibility analysis. That's another one as you get ready to go into 2023. And everybody's worried about this recession uh, potential. And, you know, the predictions are all over the place. Some folks say we're already in one. I would tend to agree that we're already in one. Uh, I think we're going to come out of one. If you'd like to know more about my predictions for 2023, take a listen to our podcast from last week, where myself and Bruce Tockerman from Research FDI discuss our 2023 predictions. Unfortunately, Bruce did have one prediction that already failed, and that was the National College 
championship. It was a slaughter, and he he was way off on that. And I told him, there's no way I'm going to cut that out. You are sticking to your guns. I'm going to make sure everyone knows that you uh, predicted Georgia to lose, and they did not. Um, <clears throat> at any rate, what I want to say is that uh, as we move forward, you know, you may have some goals this year, and, and you may be concerned with the recession and a reduction projects, you know, projects that you're seeing, RFIs that you're seeing. You might be concerned about, you know, site visits waning uh, in your community. You still have to focus as an economic development professional. You still have to focus on those core things that you need to do to be prepared for when opportunity turns around again, which I think is going to happen later this year as we get into the end of second quarter and, and first of third quarter of this year. So what can you do to be prepared? Obviously, one of those things is strategic planning. Another is site readiness, making sure that your sites are up to snuff, doing a fatal flaw analysis, doing site feasibility. If you don't have a site right now, we're about to kick off a site identification process for a community uh, in about a week and a half. And so that runs the gamut. We want to assist you in making sure that you're fully prepared as possible. There's a lot of folks who need to update their labor analysis right now. I mean, that's a really key thing. When we're talking about site visits. I mean, that was very important uh, this week in Texas was discussing uh, on these site visits. It will be next week as well, too, uh, is understanding what the workforce potential is, not just today, but as you look into the future, what's that future pipe, talent pipeline look like within those communities? Companies still rate that as one of the highest issues that they see, and they want as much data as possible. A tip for those of you who are getting site visits, if you have a strong workforce case, labor case, when you are on a site visit, it is always a good practice to make sure, if possible, to have a local HR person to meet with the, uh, the client that's coming in and talk to them about what they experience from that standpoint. Have some good anecdotal evidence. We had a really great um, uh, example of a, a company who had 150 jobs open here and uh, had 1,500 people apply online and 2,000 apply in person. That's a massive amount of folks for 150 jobs, and that shows well. Don't just have one. Just don't don't just have one example though. Try to have at least two, and if possible, get them in front of an existing company. But that. That also means you have to have a good, strong BRE program. So make sure you're you're shoring that up as well. A um, few things on sports side. Okay, uh, look, Cal Perry has had some crazy things going on the last few weeks on the UK side. I'm really proud of the fact that we beat Tennessee. Uh, I always like the fact that that we we can beat a top ranked SEC team, but we lost to the worst team in the league as well uh, just a few days prior. So things are going going wrong. Had been going wrong. We hit a dip there as a team, but we're coming back up. I still think we're going to be uh, at the NCAA tournament. I want to see what this team's capable of. I also just enjoy basketball. I love college basketball. And honestly, if UK's not in it, I'm usually going to pull for an SEC team because, you know, I like the SEC more than anything. Um, but at the end of the day, it, the, the best thing about college basketball is the competitiveness of the players and, and when it gets out there. And we may be doing something special for March Madness. I do want to give a shout out to the Dallas Cowboys. A congratulations to the Dallas Cowboys. You have finally surpassed Tom Brady in playoff wins by one game. What a great, what a great thing. What a great accomplishment. You, you, you surpassed the GOATs playoffs wins. Um, I, I say that for two reasons. Chad was at the game uh, last week, but two, my brother uh, was a huge Dallas Cowboys fan back in the day. He may still be, I don't know. We don't talk about football as much anymore. I'm not going to say I, I didn't enjoy some of the players back in the day too. You know, I loved Emmett Smith, loved watching him. Uh, and and you know, Troy Aiken was okay. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, this, this NFL uh, postseason, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of crazy things. There's a lot of things going on out there with, you know, referees right now and all this controversy. And I'm on the road too much to to pay attention to it. Tune into Chad's channels on YouTube. If you really want to get some analysis on some football, you need to go check his stuff out. At any rate, we appreciate you joining us. Stay tuned because Ivy's going to be talking about some great announcements that have occurred uh, with some of our friends and clients and uh, other folks across the Southeast and Midwest that have happened uh, over the past couple of months. And then uh, Brittany's going to be joining us uh, on the newscast here in a little bit as well for your next move. We have several executive searches going on. Another thing that we have created uh, is a new jobs board uh, on the Next Move Group's website. Uh, and that's going to give capability for folks to post jobs on there uh, as well. <clears throat> Doesn't have to be a number one job. Obviously, we, we like to do the executive searches for those. But if you have, you know, number two jobs, number three jobs, you want to post those on our website, you want those going out uh, to our email list. We have a very strong email list that those go out to. Reach out to us again, Chuck at nextmovegroup.com. Uh, you can also reach out to Alex, Chad, Ivor, anybody on the team. Until next month, 
Due to various demands on time and resources, economic development and trade and export agencies often struggle to complete effective market research and business outreach campaigns. For the past 10 plus years, Research FDI, along with our affiliated consulting groups at Research B2B and FDI 365, have leveraged our in-house knowledge, resources, and expertise in market research and consulting to help over 250 organizations directly facilitate inward investment attraction and new trade and export opportunities for their regions across a wide variety of industry sectors. Our highly personalized services and best cost to quality ratio in the industry ensures our client satisfaction, leading to repeat customers year after year. What are you waiting for? Leave the market research and business outreach to the expert team at Research FDI. To learn more about our services, contact us today. Welcome back to another week of jobs with the Next Move Group. As always, we'll cover a couple of positions available on our end, and then we'll cover a few more available across the U.S. So let's get started. First up, the Kilgore, Texas Economic Development Corporation is looking for a business development director. In this role, the director will have two main focus areas, and that's the needs of existing employers and new business development for the EDC. The director reports directly to the executive director of the EDC, but will also work with site consultants, business executives, real estate brokers, city officials, professional organizations, and the general public representing KEDC. The ideal candidate will have proven project management skills as they will be juggling multiple projects at a time. So this individual needs to have the ability to follow up with and form lasting relationships with existing and new business without additional oversight. The full job profile can be viewed on our website at www.thenextmovegroup.com backslash Kilgore. Any questions can be directed to myself, Brittany McCoy. You can either call me at 504-615-7174 or email me at Brittany at the next move group.com. The last date to apply will be February 3rd at 5 p.m. Next up in next move group searches, the Monroe County, Mississippi Chamber of Commerce is looking for an executive director. This role will have a focus on both economic development and Chamber of Commerce experience, as he or she will serve as the face of both programs to business prospects, chamber members, local citizens, and to outside agencies and allies. The director's primary role is to provide leadership to the chamber and its partnering organizations in achieving community and economic development goals that result in sustained existing industry, new employment opportunities, per capita income growth, and expansion of the county's property tax base. He or she will also be reporting to the Chamber Board of Directors and the Executive Committee on at least a monthly basis. On an as-need basis, the Director will also have to coordinate meetings with local elected officials. Close working relationships with both the mayors of Aberdeen and Armory, Mississippi, their respective boards of aldermen, and the Monroe County Board of Supervisors is essential in this position as well. You can view the full job profile at www.thenextmovegroup.com backslash Monroe. The salary range is $120,000 to $160,000. You can apply by submitting your cover letter, resume, and references to Monroe at thenextmovegroup.com. Questions can be directed to me, again, Brittany McCoy, at 504-615-7174, or you can email me at Brittany at nextmovegroup.com. The last date to apply for this one as well will be February 3rd by 5 p.m. All right, and other searches available across the U.S., the Council for South Texas Economic Development Progress, or COSTEP, is looking for a CEO. COSTEP is a 501c4 that helps residents in the seven-county Rio South Texas region provide a better life for themselves and their families through educational initiatives, such as helping to fund millions of dollars in student scholarships and through providing uh, free financial literacy education programs. It is now a 501c3 and it is advancing regional prosperity by adding a strategic framework for economic development. It's driven by data and market validation with a strong emphasis on job creation and building a regional talent pipeline. Reporting to the board of directors, the CEO is responsible for the active management of the organization's business affairs, leading the development and execution of both long and short-term strategic and technical, tactical initiatives that align with its overall vision and strategic plan. You can follow the link provided to view the full job profile and the salary range for this role, depending on experience and qualifications, is $165,000 to $250,000. 
For more information, please contact Marsha Reed, who's the Senior Vice President uh, for Strategic Government Resources at Marsha Reed at governmentresources.com or by phone at 806-789-9641. Last but not least, the city of Bellevue, Washington is looking for a business assistance manager. As a city in transition, Bellevue is Seattle's largest neighbor with a welcoming, multicultural, innovation-focused community that attracts technology pioneers, outdoor enthusiasts, and pragmatists from around the world, with 40% of its population being foreign-born. Under the direction of the Chief Economic Development Officer, the Business Assistance Manager will manage the city's business relations program and oversee work to help market the city to new businesses, help existing businesses thrive, coordinate partnerships to meet workforce needs for the future, and to represent the organization in regional discussions. In this role, there will be a lot of team management, collaboration with other parties, relationship maintenance, and communication with small and medium-sized businesses. For more information, you can contact Jesse Canedo, the Chief Economic Development Officer in the Community Development Department at 425-452-5236. The Community Development Department works, the full-time employees work on um, a hybrid schedule with three days in office working from the Bellevue City Hall. The salary range for this position is $96,000 to $132,000, and you can follow the link provided to apply for this role. That's going to be it for jobs available across the U.S. with the next move group. As always, stay tuned for our next opportunity and good luck in the job search. Happy New Year. I'm Next Move Group COO Ivy Stanley, and this is January's Rounding the Bases. Renewal by Anderson, the full service window replacement division of Anderson Corporation, will create 900 new jobs and invest more than $420 million in a new manufacturing facility in Henry County, Georgia. The Renewal by Anderson Division manufactures, sells, and installs an exclusive replacement window solution to customers across the United States. Provider of construction and steel fabrication solutions for the wood products industry, Peak North America USA, will acquire a local fabrication company and add a new building to the property in Irvington, Alabama. The $24 million project is expected to create 175 jobs over the next four years, and operations are scheduled to begin in June of this year. Apex Mills, a specialty supplier and manufacturer of warp knit fabrics geared towards industrial and technical applications, will acquire the former Haynes Brands facility and its equipment in Patrick County, Virginia. The $3.1 million project is expected to create 44 jobs. Global biopharmaceutical company Kite will establish a new warehouse adjacent to its current facility in Frederick, Maryland. The project includes the construction of a 70,000 square foot facility and will create 100 new jobs. Cold storage warehousing and logistics company Flex Cold plans to establish operations in Dorchester County, South Carolina. This is their second U.S. location. The $49.9 million project is expected to create 59 new jobs. Pet food product manufacturer Nestle Purina Pet Care will expand its Clinton, Iowa operations with a $110 million project that will create 15 new jobs. The investment includes the construction of a new 90,000 square foot building and the addition of automated warehousing technology. Precision machining service provider Bullen Ultrasonics plans to expand its technology development center in Eaton, Ohio with a $14 million project that is expected to create 55 jobs. This investment will support critical industry sector growth in semiconductor, manufacturing, aerospace composites, and microelectromechanical systems. Niagara Bottling plans to establish a new production facility near Hammond, Louisiana. The highly automated 500,000 square foot facility will contain advanced technology and equipment that will increase production efficiency to allow the company to meet growing demand. The project is $160 million and ex is expected to create 70 new jobs. Construction will begin this spring. Nokian Tires will expand operations at its facility in Dayton, Tennessee. This Finland-based company that develops, manufactures, and distrib distributes premium tires worldwide will create 75 new jobs and invest $174 million for this project, which includes a 600,000 square foot warehouse that will double the company's tire production capabilities. At full production capacity, they will be able to produce up to 4 million tires per year. If you have a project announcement you'd like to be featured, please send it directly to me at ivy at nextmovegroup.com. Until next time. Mm -hmm.